Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem is the coding sequence of the alcohol dehydrogenase ADH gene of the melanogaster consists of 765 nucleotides, 255 codons, 192 of these nucleotides are functionally silent, that is they can be changed without changing an amino acid in the ADH uh, polypeptide in a study of genetic variation in the ADH gene Martin Greatman observed that sorting out of 192 silent nucleotides were polymorphic. If the same level of the polymorphism uh, existed among the non-silent nucleotides of the ADH gene, how many amino acid polymorphism would uh, Greatman have observed in the population he studied? First of all, I want you to take a look at this table. This is codon table. Uh, 20 amino acids are coded by 64 combinations and 3 combinations are stop codon, specify stop codon and doesn't code for amino acids and 61 code for 20 amino acids. That means that on the average 3 combinations code per 1 amino acid. Sometimes it can be 4 combinations, sometimes 2 combinations, but on the average 3 because we have four nucleotides for each position to choose. So uh, four multiplied by four multiplied by four give us total number of combinations, 64. And according to our problem at the third position, which we also call wobbling position, usually if you change a base here, still such codon would code for the same amino acid. We'll take a look. First two positions here are the same, but the last one can be any. Uracil, cytosine, adenine, guanine, and still uh, this specify the same amino acid. Change in the first position or second position always in 100% of all the cases would change also amino acid. But again, change in the last position in many cases doesn't change amino acid specified by such codon. But sometimes change in the last position, third position also change amino acid. As you see here, first two positions are the same, but here uh, these bases are different at the third position and specify different amino acids. Now let's return to our problem and let's read it again. So we have 765 nucleotides and 255 codons and 255 codons specify 255 amino acids. So one codon specify one amino acid and 192 of these nucleotides are functionally silent. And we know that functionally silent only can be third position in a codon. And now imagine that here we have chain of nucleotides. So this is messenger RNA. And of course we are going to have here codons that specify amino acids. So let's say this is going to be one codon, this is second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. And this three nucleotides would specify one amino acid, second, third, and so on. And only, for example, change that can happen here doesn't change amino acid or change here. For example, cytosine would be replaced with guanine, but still it's going to code for the same amino acid. And now let me put this nucleotides and three nucleotides or codons in a column. So let's say that again if we change in this codon's last position, last nucleotide, it's not going to change amino acids that this trinucleotides code for. And we have, as you see, 192 such codons. 192 codons out of 255 codons, if we change the last position in them, 
would still code for the same amino acid. That means 255, 255 minus 192 would give us 63 trinucleotides where if we change even the last position we change amino acid. So if we change this position we are going to get new amino acid and we have 63 such nucleotides and we have 90, 192 where we if we change last position there is not going to be any change at all. Let's return to our problem. What do we see? Sorting out of this 192 silent nucleotides are polymorphic, meaning that actual change happens here. So sometimes it's not necessary that there are going to be any change. Let me add some more trinucleotides here and they would represent those where we don't find any changes. And in some we do find such changes. And according to our problem, sorting out of 192 does have changes in the third position. So let's find the frequency. So we have to divide sorting by 192. And we can find the frequency of such an event. And this is going to be 0 0.0. 68. Or if you need an answer in percentage form, we just have to multiply this number by 100 and we are going to get 6.8% the frequency where third position doesn't specify any change in amino acid. So this just happened randomly and still we have same amino acid and this is frequency of such an event. Now let's think what would happen if we will have the same frequency for all three nucleotides. Then uh, what we would expect to see uh, changes in amino acid frequency. For example, for 192, if we we'll change first position, we are going to get new amino acid. And as you see, expected frequency is going to be 0 0.0. 068 and we also can get new amino acid if second position in trinucleotide change and what is the probability again 0 0.068 and then again we can get different amino acid now important moment do we have to add these probabilities or multiply these probabilities if we can connect two independent probabilities with the word and then we have to multiply these probabilities. If we can connect these two probabilities with the word or we have to add these probabilities. In our case we will get a change in amino acid if first nucleotide and trinucleotide would change or second would change. Then we will get a change in amino acid. Because we connect these two probabilities with the word OR, we have to combine these probabilities. So we have to add probabilities. So we are going to get here probability 0 0.136 or 13.6 percent. Again, we do not apply probability for the third position to be changed because it doesn't affect change in amino acid. So for 192 we have to apply this rule that uh, each trinucleotide has 13.6 percent probability to be changed if uh, this uh, random event which happened to the third position would also happen to the first and second position leading to change in amino acid. Now let's find the how many amino acids we would have if such event would happen. We have again 192 such trinucleotides 
and let's multiply by 0 0.136 and we are going to find how many amino acids we expect to find mutated or different. And rounded number is going to be 26 amino acids out of uh, this 192. One more time, this number represents number trinucleotides or codons where third position, if it would be changed, doesn't change amino acid. But as you remember, we also have 63 trinucleotides or codons where change in the third position would change amino acid that this codon code for. And we have 63 such trinucleotides. And what is the probability would be to have change in codon sequence? Uh, we already got this number, uh, which is here. So for the first position, it's going to be 0 0.068. For the second position, it's going to be 0 0.068. And for the third position, it's also going to be 0 0.068. Where is the change in the first position or in the second position or in the third position would cause change in amino acids that such sequence would code for? Because we can connect uh, this independent probabilities with the word or, we have to add these three probabilities. If we add all these three numbers, we are going to get 0 0.204 or 20.4 percent. And now let's multiply number of such trinucleotides or codons by number which represent probability that uh, such an event that one of this trinucleotide uh, position would be mutated and changed to different uh, nucleotide happen, which is 20%, roughly 20%. So let's multiply these numbers. So this is going to be 63 multiplied by 0 0.204. Roughly rounded uh, answer is going to be 13 nucleotides. Now let's add these two numbers which represent number of expected uh, mutations in amino acid sequence. So we expect that uh, we should get 26 plus 13 which would give us 39 amino acid that should be changed if uh, this mutation event would happen randomly. Now let's return to our problem. If the same level of the polymorphism existed among the non-silent nucleotides of the ADH gene, how many amino acid polymorphism would Greatman have observed in the populations he studied? And we have found that he should uh, observe about 39 nucleotide changes, but actually he observed only one change. What does this information tell us? This tells us that changes in this important gene is deleterious and harmful to the organism and whether reduce fitness of such an organism or would cause death of such an organism. That's why such changes are not observed. So not high number like we got here and only one change have been tolerated by organism. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day and see you in the next video. Goodbye.